think understanding the difference between danger and fear is really important. They're not synonymous. Danger is just a thing. Fear is your reaction. And they don't have to be the same thing. Chris, of all the lessons that you learned when going to space, which ones would you highlight? I think there are a couple things that uh, once you get over just the excitement of flying in space and the coolness of, of weightlessness and spacewalking and such, there are a few fundamental ideas in there that are really important. One of them is, uh, how do you deal with fear in your life? Do you let it keep you from doing things? Do you just say, oh, I'm afraid of that, like, I'm afraid of flying? That's, that's a reasonable decision to make, but that means you're never going to fly anywhere. So I think understanding the difference between danger and fear is really important. They're not synonymous. Danger is just a thing. Fear is your reaction, and they don't have to be the same thing. I mean, I, I assume you know how to ride a bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you weren't born knowing how to ride a bicycle, and when you were little and you were learning to ride a bicycle, you were fearful because you didn't know how yet. It was, mm -hmm. and you, and you had the uh, of crashing and breaking a tooth or breaking your head or something. So learning to ride a bicycle is hard at first and it makes you scared and fearful. But after a while, um, you know how to ride a bicycle and, and you're good at it. And, and after that, it, it would seem silly to be afraid. Are you afraid of riding a bicycle? I'm not afraid of riding a bicycle, but the bicycle didn't change. The bicycle's exactly as dangerous as it always was. It's just you changed who you were. The danger is the same, but you are no longer afraid. Things aren't scary, just people get scared. Mm. And so I think it's a really worthwhile thing to look at in your own life is what are you afraid of? And how is that changing the decisions that you're making in your life? And if those decisions are important to you, like riding a bicycle or flying in space or whatever, getting married or changing jobs or whatever, then try and figure out what's the actual danger, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not just your animal fear. And if it's a danger that you can do something about, like gaining your skills, the ultimate, for me, the ultimate antidote for fear is competence. Change your level of competence. Mm -hmm. And if you become good at something, then you don't need to be afraid of it. And then maybe you, don't, you can include it in your own life and, and enrich in your own yeah. life. In order to, to be an astronaut, uh, it takes time. You might decide to be an astronaut like I did when you're nine, but nobody's going to let you be an astronaut when you're nine years old because you <laughs> have no idea what you're doing. And you need to gain a lot of skills along the way. So you have to decide to do something that is going to take a tremendously long amount of time and that probably will never happen at the end. That, that's the life of an astronaut. How do you stay motivated? How do you, how do you not lose uh, momentum or lose hope? How do you deal with setbacks? Because over, whatever, 25 years, there are going to be all sorts of setbacks, medical ones, uh, life ones, uh, policy ones, technical ones. So I think an important uh, necessity in order to fly in space is to find a way to maintain a sense of purpose and a direction to your life, mm -hmm. even though it takes a long time and it's probably never going to get to the end. And the way that I do that is I don't wait until the end to feel successful. I, I don't say, I hate what I'm doing this year, and I don't like doing all this stuff, and no one cares, and this is gonna take forever, and the only time I'm gonna be happy is 22 years from now when I walk on the moon. If you wait until <laughs> you walk on the moon, then even walking on the moon won't be fun, because yeah. it won't turn out the way you want it. The key is to have that long-term goal to help decide what to do with your life, to help decide what to do next. Okay. How should I spend this week? What courses should I take this year? What should I do this summer? What movie should I watch tonight? Have that long-term goal, but then celebrate every step along the way. Yeah. I think it's important to try and, and lower your personal bar of victory as low as you possibly can, so that you allow yourself to feel victorious every, every single day. day. Well, there, it's kind of up to you whether you yeah. feel a failure or feel a victory. Yeah. Nobody else really cares what you're doing. Yeah. Your, your mom sort of tries to, but, you, <laughs> but really, you know, it's kind of up to you. Mm -hmm. So don't let other people tell you when you're a success. Allow yourself, in pursuit of those long-term goals, to have as many 
daily or weekly or interim yeah. successes as possible. And then your life feels, instead of like it's going nowhere, that in fact it's sort of building momentum, that you're constantly accomplishing things, that you're, you're turning yourself into who you're dreaming yeah. of being. Without that, I, I don't know how I ever could have endured all of, of the work to become the astronaut that I eventually am. Thank you.